Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trofin at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to Gwent Edge, the show where we talk about interesting decks to play around with. And today we're going to be doing just that because we've uh, it's been a while since we've done the last video. I needed some time to settle in to the new season, and uh, I've decided to do a Northern Realms deck today. Um, Reavers have been in the deck for quite some time, but with the new Melitele's Temple. Uh, card. I think I found uh, a very fun combination that works with both Reavers, Centurion Royal Guards and more. So uh, let's head into the deck building to show off the Temple Reavers. So Temple Reavers is a pretty classic mobilization Reavers deck with a fun twist. We're doing a lot of deck boosting as well with Erland, uh, Muta Generator and some other fancy cards. We're going to be trying to get as much carryover as possible because usually when you play reavers the big problem you have is your if your opponent is actually running a lot of control that your reavers just get killed and killed all over again we have a few counters to that we can put them back into the deck with pavetta um, and we also have the centurion royal guards as i said before which is a good alternative if you're not into doing that much damage and it's a bit safer to uh, get a swarm of those going um, along with Muta Generator and of course Erland being a very big finisher uh, if you manage to pull off the carryover. I'll be going through each and every single card one by one in detail, but if you're not interested in, interested in that and want to go straight into the example matches, you can do that as well using the timeline down below. You can also, underneath the timeline, in the description, find a link to the Play Gwent website with this deck where you can import it into your own game and do let me know what you think about it. And of course, when you're there as well, don't forget to upvote because uh, all feedback is greatly appreciated. So without further ado, let's head into the cards. First up, we have two Redanian Knights. You'll notice in this deck there's a lot of low four provision bronzes. Um, that's basically to focus on the Muta Generator, which will generate a lot of points for us in the deck and outside of it, depending on what you want to do. But Redanian Knight, very powerful engine card, two power for two armor. Um, and two armor where as long as this card has armor and is on the ranged row you boost itself by one if it loses the armor it moves to the melee row and damages the highest power enemy unit by two and once you hit eight power so grace eight you also boost the adjacent units by one so one point engine with a potential to gain another two points when once it reaches eight points then we have a double century and knight as well so there's a lot of uh, a little bit of knight cards in there as well just to uh, round out our engine potential three power for four provisions on deploy you damage an enemy unit by two and if you kill that unit with that two damage you gain two vitality on this card so potential of seven points if you reach six points so one point extra than you would gain with the vitality on its own he also boosts himself by two then we have two traveling priestesses we have a couple of uh, ways of mulliganing extra cards so traveling priestesses might be very handy as well but i will definitely get to that seven point threshold which is more than we need uh, four power for four provisions has veil so cannot be locked or anything like that on deploy you gain one charge and whenever this unit is put back into your deck you increase the number of charges you gain on deploy by two um so once you mulliganed her twice she will gain five charges for example every single one of those charges allows you to boost an allied unit by one on order and if this unit is inspired you gain zeal so if it's boosted it gains zeal and then you start with zero charges so uh can be very very powerful uh seven is very handy to get which for just four provisions which is fine um, and other than that, the higher you get, the better this card will become. Now we have a double squire, also a knight, four provisions uh, for with four power. And on order, you boost the next unit you play by two. If it is a knight, you also infuse it with the ability to boost itself by one at the end of every single turn. So if you get to pull this card off, you gain an automatic extra engine card. Then we have double siege support to just get those uh, order abilities off a bit quicker. So four power for four provisions on deploy. If you put them on the melee row, you reduce the cooldown of an allied unit by one, which we will not be doing. And on the range row, which we will be doing, boost an allied unit by one. And on order, give an allied unit zeal. So you can immediately use the order ability of the next unit that you play. Then we're heading into the five provision stack. The Reaver Scout, two power for one armor. And this is a very vulnerable card, but very powerful order ability. Where you spawn and play a base copy of an allied bronze soldier, excluding himself. You can get another Reaver, you can get another Royal Guard. 
Um, so works very well with both of the archetypes that we're covering here. And then we have the Centurion Royal Guards themselves. Five power for five provisions and on deploy you boost self by three for every other Centurion Royal Guard under your control. So Centurion Royal Guards actually snowball. The more you have on the board, the more powerful the next one will be. If you have three on the board, the next one will be 14 power and so on and so forth. So this can be very, very huge if you start focusing on that. You need to be focusing on the guards once you start with it. If you go for either or, both of them will be weaker as a result. And then we have the or, so the Reaver Hunters, two power and two armor for six provisions. And on the order, spawn a base copy of self on this row and set its base power to one less than self, uh, which is important because otherwise you could keep generating Reaver Hunters while you cannot do that in the current uh, way this card is implemented. If you put them on the melee row, which is definitely something that you want to do, and they are bonded, so there's more than one on the board, you will damage the highest power enemy unit by one at the end of your turn. So it's not random, you always hit the highest power enemy unit by one. So it's not targeted damage per se, uh, you know what you're gonna hit, um, but you can't really kill something specifically with these guys. Since they're dragon hunters, they're always, always going for the largest unit. There we have Istret. Istret works really well with the deck boosting that we're going for uh, and also allows us to mulligan some priestesses back into the deck. Six power for six uh, provisions. Has zeal, has patience as well, so his order ability increases in strength with every turn. So, uh, and the order ability itself is draw up to the number of cards that you've gotten to with patience and then shuffle the same number of cards back to your deck. Whenever you draw a unit, boost it by one. If it's not a unit, boost self by one instead. So once you boost those units, you can put them back into the deck and they will have been boosted in the deck, which is nice. And then Muta Generator is a bit of a more complicated card. It's an artifact card that you put wherever you want, doesn't really matter. But from that point onwards, whenever you play a unit on your melee row, you boost five random units on your side of the battlefield with the same provision cost by one, which is hard to do. So usually we will not be doing this, but works very well with the Reavers as well, because every Reaver you play will boost all the other Reavers. On the other hand, which will be the part that we will, will be using more, is whenever you play a unit on your ranged row, you boost five random units in your deck with the same provision cost by one, which will always trigger. So basically what you want to do is play Muta Generator first and then play a few units on your ranged row, except if you're going for Reavers, of course, and you will be stacking that melee row. But otherwise, you just put your four provision bronzes on the ranged row and continuously boost your deck. Once you've done this four times, there's already 20 extra points in the deck. Um, the longer this goes on, the better. Then we have Idaran of Ulivo. We have a spam deck, a spawning spam deck, so Idaran is perfect for this you can force him to be activated immediately so six power for eight provisions and the first time you spawn a unit on your side of the battlefield each turn you spawn a one power copy of it on this row and give it doomed so he will give you an extra unit every single time you spawn one well for the first time every single turn so every reaver spawn you do will generate another one uh, right next to idaran which is uh, very very fancy indeed because the the swarm just doubles up really really quickly with him then princess pavetta i think she can be mulligan for something else if you want to have a more powerful card in the deck i really like it because it functions really well with the deck boosting mechanics uh, we want to have um, as many units in our deck by the end of this so pavetta really uh, does this really well so she can put all the reavers that you've used in the previous rounds back into the deck which will then be able to be boosted by um erland and erland i'll explain in a minute so on deploy you shuffle a bronze non-neutral unit and all of its copies from your graveyard into your deck but again you can replace her with something else if you want to and queen adalia cannot be omitted in a spawn deck three power for 10 provisions and on deploy you spawn and play a base copy of a bronze northern realms unit from your hand and then give it shield so either the reavers or the Royal Guards will function really well with her. Um, there's barely any opportunity for this card to be bricked in this deck, so uh, B, just go ahead and use her. Then Garrison. Garrison is another way of us to use uh, more soldiers. So it's a location card with resilience, so it stays on the board for one extra round. And on the ploy, you spawn and play a base copy of a bronze soldier from your starting deck. So it does not need to be on the, on the board already. Uh, you can always play a reaver or a guard from this card. And on order, you boost an allied soldier and all of its copies by one and give them an extra point of armor. 
So if your swarm is really big, this card can generate a lot of points for you as well. And it's just another backup way of getting another Reaver or guard. Then we have another card that was introduced with the Reavers as well. Bowhold, two power and one armor for 12 provisions has formation. So you can either gain seal or an extra point. I would always go for zeal because uh, Bowhold is uh, very flimsy on his own for 12 provisions. But on order you spawn a base copy of an allied bronze soldier on its row. And whenever you spawn a soldier, you also boost yourself by two. So if you put him on the melee row, which will gain him zeal and use the order ability, he will immedi immediately boost himself by two as well. So four power, one armor and a, an extra spawn, which is uh, basically a little bit more powerful than Adalia, aside from the fact that he doesn't provide a shield to the card that he's spawning. Next up, we have uh, a very crucial card in this, in this deck for our finishing move. Erland of Larvik is four power for 12 provisions. Can gain immunity if you play him when you have three cards in your hand or less. Uh, otherwise he won't. On deploy you boost all units in your deck by one. So this is where Pavetta uh, comes in. Pavetta gives you a lot of extra units in your deck back by the end of the match. And then Erland can boost all those extra units by one. And then on order he can remove all the boosts from all units in our deck. And boost this unit by the same amount. So if you've packed a lot of points into your deck with Muta Generator. Uh, and other cards like Erland himself or Istret. Um, there's a lot of points in the deck and Erland can definitely go to 30 points or more. Um, and there's even a way to use him twice in this deck, which leads us immediately to the Temple of Melitele uh, Congregation. So this is a location card, that so it stays on the board for a round more. It also has immunity as one of the very few uh, location cards that actually have immunity. And on deploy, you create a legendary unit from your faction that is not in your starting deck. And you can do that three times. So you get three options, you choose, you shuffle them into your deck. And then on order, you draw a unit of your choice and boost it by your hand size. And then shuffle a card back to your deck. So technically, this card does not give you any points aside from the extra points on the card that you draw. Uh, so it's a 12 provision card that in this form doesn't really do all that much. I don't really like the initial effect. You can get lucky with a few extra gold cards in your deck. But for me, the focus should be on the second form of this card, which will um, only be available if, you, if you've won around this match. Um, and the second form is the pilgrimage form, where you on deploy shuffle an allied unit back to your deck, then shuffle an enemy unit of the same power or less back to your opponent's deck. Meaning that you can destroy, basically, but you put it back to your deck, a unit on the board and destroy a similarly powered unit on your opponent's side of the board. If you match that exactly, you've gained nothing. Nothing changes point-wise, but of course you could remove an engine card from your opponent or something similar. But on order, you can play the shuffled unit from your deck back onto the board. Meaning that you can replay any gold card in this deck, including Erland, Adalia, Bullhold. Those will be the main three that you want to replay. Um, why, especially Erland, can be very, very powerful if you play him twice. Um, it does require a little bit of risk, because uh, it means that you need to play Erland before he can gain immunity, meaning that he's also a four-point card that is now very vulnerable to being removed. Because um, if he's removed, you can't remove him yourself with the Temple of Melitele. So... Bohold is an other very good option which will also have his own uses while he's on the board and will have gained a lot of points you can take out a unit from your opponent that's also a bit higher in power. Uh, we'll see that in action in a minute. And then Onairomancy is just a consistency tool here so we can play any card from our deck and we can do that twice because at the end of the round that we used this card in first we'll get it back into our hand. Our stratagem is the engineering solution so boosting an allied unit by four and giving it a shield very handy for your first reaver. And then our leader ability we cannot forget about that as well because mobilization is crucial. Don't use this in the first round most of the time because you want to use this for a very, very big round three. On order, you spawn a base copy of an allied bronze soldier on its row and boost both units by three. So you can get another reaver, boost both of the reavers that you just, uh, so the original one and the copy by three points. So that's another six points. And then the reavers automatically, so even on your first reveal, you get that bonded ability. Uh, so you get two points of damage immediately if you use the ability on the order uh, on the uh, reaver that you just played. So mobilization, very powerful with reavers. And with that being said, we can head straight into a couple of example matches. While experimenting, I faced a lot of Nilfgaard, but today that does not seem to be the case. Elven Deadeyes instead. So that might be a lot of traps, which I think is fine. 
I think I definitely can handle that. Um, we do start with two Reavers. The Knights, I definitely want to swap out. They're not that useful. We also get our, both our Century and Royal Guards. I want to get rid of that as well. Bowhold is nice. A uh, lot of units, no Muted Generator, no on Aeromancy. Uh, so I'm going to just do this and we get Pavetta as well. So we can go all out on our um, Reavers, which is nice. So let's start with a Reaver Scout and let's put that in the back and shield it immediately. Uh, meaning that we can get an extra Reaver if we can pull it off. And then we get Dunka, so our uh, Reaver Scout will remain. And we can put our first Reaver on the board. And then double play it. So now we have the bonded ability immediately because we have two Reavers. Both of them will be able to spawn another one in a minute. And then we get the Hawker Smuggler. So this is a hand boosting deck. Which we should be doing fine against. Yeah, I think Siege support is going to be fine. Unless I want to put a Redanian Knight there first. Um, but let's do this and this as well. So the Reaver's coming in. And then we can put... Yeah, Siege support here. There we go. So four Reavers means four points of damage every single turn. And then the next one will be able to boost as well. So we can have six Reavers on the board already. I'm going to be careful. I don't really need six Reavers. Although it would, would be nice though. Uh, they're doing a lot of hand boosting. And they're continuously getting those points now. Because we're not technically killing anything. Uh, so I'm just going to put down... Six Reavers in total, so that should kill anything that's coming up. Um, so there we go. So there goes the Dunka. Ooh, and then they're doing that. I think I'm just going to pass. I have six points of damage per turn. Uh, they're not going to kill anything now, but they're going to kill the... Yeah, they're not going to kill anything. But it's fine, I think. It could actually kill something if we get really lucky. Yeah, we got the uh, Hawker Smuggler there, so I'm going to pass. And they pass as well, okay. So that means I can actually push here and maybe even go full Royal Guards or even just carry over. So this is a very good position to be in. We also get our Temple. I'm going to get rid of the Sentry Knight and we get... Ooh, Muta Generator. This is ideal. I can replay Bohold. I'm going to even get rid of one of the Redanian Knights here because I don't really need them. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, our first Traveling Priestess. I could do just Reavers again. But I'm going to put Muta Generator down first. I want to start generating that uh, that carryover. I'm going to play Garrison as well. We're going to get a 5 points. I'm going to use my leader ability. Um, I'm going to get a Reaver Hunter here. And immediately um, start using it with the leader ability. There we go. Then we can put either on down and then we can get just the same amount. I think this is not going to take too long. I think our opponent is a bit too careful with uh, with us being the sim same amount of cards. An Aeromancy coming in. I don't think it will make much difference. We get the scenario card, which was to be expected. But uh, I don't think this is going to be yeah making that much difference. Because we can now play either on, on the front row. Um, and then spawn the first one. So we got two Reavers there. I could even hold off on the next one. It's fine for now. Although five basically kills something over there. So I'm just going to do this as well. There we go. We can play Bohold on the melee row actually. So that kills one Reaver. Uh, we can actually play Bohold on the melee row here. And have him spawn another one. And then spawn another one. So now that row is full, but I can actually get Bohold back with the temple. And that's going to kill... What was uh, Nothing, actually. Vernosial, we're going to get a Waylay there. So they're going to kill one of the Reavers. I'm going to actually use Temple of Melitele here to kill the Vernosial's Commando. Which is sad. I could have killed something bigger, but there's not going to be much bigger. So I'm going to use Temple of Melitere, get rid of Bohold, and then get rid of the Vernosial's Commando, and then spawn two more Reavers. And that is just going to keep going, isn't it? Um, I could even use Garrison, but I'm pretty sure I just used Garrison, so it's just carry over for later. Just in case if we lose this round, I don't think we will. Because um, we, ha we just have mechanical advantage here.
There we go. Um, I'm going to put down the Rudanian Knight. And just get some more uh, boosting in our deck. So we don't really need to do anything here. I could respawn Boholt, but I'm going to even keep him for later. Half Elf Hunter. I'm just banking on the Mutant Generator now. Uh, I'll just do uh, continuously do this. There we go. We get an extra point from the Priestess, but it's not... Uh, the big thing that we're looking for. I'm waiting for Vernosiel, which is probably going to be next. Ah, isn't game first, of course. Um, I'm going to put Princess Pavetta down as well. And I can put all those Reavers back into my deck. And boost the Redanian Knight by one. I could boost them, because uh, we know Vernosiel is going to be next, so I'm going to use Garrison now. And give extra armor to all the Reavers. And then we get Italin. That is actually really good. I'm just gonna pass now. Um, we have one more bit of carryover with Bohold being in the temple. So this is fine. This might actually give them... There's a lot of armor on the board though. There we go. Even got it with an extra card. So we got this with two card advantage basically. But very good matchup. And next up we get Pincer Maneuver. So that is probably shuffling cards back and forth just as, well, way more than what we're going to do. Um, I don't need Pavetta. We start again. I don't need Pavetta in round one. Um, so I'm going to get rid of her. Bohold is really nice, but we don't have a guard. Not ideal. We can still use Garrison to get a Reaver going. Um, so I'm going to put Reaver Scout. Yeah, I'm going to have to. Uh, so Reaver Scout down first and then uh, go into the next turn. We also get Wandering um, Sunset Wanderers because they're moving. I saw a card moving in their hand. Ooh, Cardo Ballista. Pincer Maneuver immediately. This is three turns of cooldown. So once they use two, I'm just counting whether they can actually counter the uh, Reaver Scout here. And if I'm able to use the Muta Generator, I think I can. Oh, and they also have Muta Generator. All right. Okay, that's actually fine. I'm fine with that. Um, I can garrison now. Go into probably Reavers. I don't have a lot of other options, so I'm just going to go into Reavers. There we go. And then play another Reavers and they're all going to get, uh, yeah, boosted. We got Landsknecht. Uh, he won't be inspired, by the way, because um, I'm going to remove that boost with the uh, the Reavers. Um, now I can put Boholt in the front. Spawn another Reavers, which will boost him. And then both of these can also spawn a Reavers and Boholt is already at 9. There we go. And there we go. One of the Reavers goes down. And another engine card over there. I'm going to start using... It's actually for the first time I have a use for the Sentry Knight. Because um, it can just kill the Carabalista here. Um, we get extra f five extra points in our deck. We can get another Reaver. If our opponent does not pass, I'm actually going to. Okay, they are passing, which means I actually get another five points because I'm going to do this again. Um, I'm going to add another squire here as well because I get five more points in the deck and I can just shuffle around my deck in the most ideal position possible. I could have pushed as well, but I think it's probably better to focus on getting a really good hand. As it seems to be right now, we can also get rid of the Priestess here, which is already at three charges. Um, another Reaver. Probably don't need the Siege support here. Okay, could have went for carryover. Well, no carryover. The, the Garrison play there, but I think it's fine. Vanish. That was a waste of a Karate Heatwave. It doesn't stay on the board anymore, so I don't know why you would waste Karate there. Or even your pincer maneuver, you still have a round of mulligans. We still have a leader ability as well, so I think we can definitely generate like a huge swarm rather quickly. We don't have Bohold anymore, but we still have Adalia. 
which we can guarantee with on aeromancy so i would like at least adalia or temple in hand uh, oh and erland we can't forget about Erland. Lost the rounds there. So two more mulligans. We got... I don't need the siege support. We get the bad priestess. So I can actually mulligan her. And then get... Okay. Sentry and Knight. Not ideal. So both Erland and Adalia are in the deck. I'm gonna do this, the exact same thing. Because I can get some extra cards from this. Okay, great. They actually given me an out here. Because I can now use my leader ability without too much trouble. So let's do that. Let's go Reaver Hunters and use the leader ability. There we go. Because if we can get either of those two pretty low, then we should be good to go. And I really want Erland or Adalia in my hand, which we can get with this thread. We're going to be up to five Reavers, unless they actually uh, get rid of the Reavers here. But I would be surprised. Okay, I don't even mind that all that much. I know they can get a, a couple of extra mulligans in, because uh, they're banking on Melitele, I'm assuming. But to me, this is ideal. Idaeran. Spawn. And I'm going to leave it at that, actually. Because I can double up on the next spawn as well, without even the need for anything fancy. How far are we up to? Istred is at 3. That's Pavetta. How many Reavers do we have? We actually have six Reavers in the graveyard at the moment. Okay. And that was this thread triggering. Four cards. Which means they get another eight points on Snowdrop. Another two and then another two. Okay. This is fine. He says while the house is burning. So we still have a lot of cards. Uh, they've given us a lot of setup time. Uh, so I'm even going to keep Istret alive for longer. Um, and I'm going to try and go for the double Erland play. Definitely this, so we get two more Reavers. And I think I'm going to go Squire, although I could probably use another card. No, Squire. Squire first, and then we'll see where we end up. So that's still six damage per turn. We can get another batch of Reavers next. So we're on the right track, I think. Okay, we get some siege equipment there. And some more pincer maneuvering. Um, get another Reaver. Um, get Istred is up to five now. Which is silly, because we can't actually do anything about that. Gonna trigger the Squire and put the Rodanian Knight in the back. And then I'm gonna... Put his threat and activate him. Okay, Erland. Wow. Okay. Let's put the double siege support back. Sentry and Knight. Traveling Priestess. There we go. So we still have six cards. That's okay. Just the, the same amount of points still. And they're going apparently for that guy. I'm gonna have to be careful here. I'm not gonna be able to do double. Erland, I think. I mean, I could, but there's multiple engines on the board right now. And I don't want to risk it. So he's five right now. Five points is something that they'll be able to do, right? So, any anyway, first things first is putting Pavetta down and getting all the Reavers back into the deck. That's the first thing that we need to do anyway. But I, mm, it's really risky to put Erland in danger there. Lock an enemy unit. Are they going to use it? No. Why would they lock something like that? So, if they have a Warfare card... No, I, I can't risk it. Um, so I'm going to do Adalia into Centurion Royal Guards. No, I can actually do Traveling Priestess. I can actually do Traveling Priestess. It's going to be more, I think... So it's 7 and 5. Um, I could have done that first, but yeah, it's fine. Okay, they're going for the Reaver still, which is... Weird, because I still have at least one where I can put it back. 
Oh boy. Which card would be the most ideal to replay? Kind of fucked myself with that one. I think maybe even um, Istred, because I can replay him, get a bunch of other cards. Uh, so I'm gonna put Erland down first. He's gonna get immunity, so that is absolutely fine. Go beyond, become more. So now they need to actually kill the um, the one I still have here, because he'll be able to spawn another one now. Okay, they are not doing that. Double boost Istrat. The reason for that is I'm gonna use Temple to get rid of Snowdrop. Like this. And that's gonna be fine. I'm gonna try and get rid of at least one of the Centurion Royal Guards. And maybe even get the uh, the other Traveling Priestess in return. I'm gonna hold off on spawning another one. I wanna see what their next cards are gonna be. So now I can actually double play another Reaver. Then we got Vernon Roach. They actually cleared up their deck almost fully, which is interesting. Ah, oh, now they get the replay. Ah, that's annoying. I should have known that that was going to happen. Although, no, I wouldn't have never guessed that Vernon Roach would, would have been an option. So now they get Snowdrop again. And they can mulligan that away again. But I don't see them... That's going to be interesting. I don't know what they're trying to do here. It's going to be a very big traveling priestess. Or maybe even Melitele, but... Is that going to be enough on its own? So now, very carefully, double reverse. Um, and then I can put Istred back here. I still have two spaces. He's still at five cards. And I can draw five cards. Reaver... Reaver, Reaver, Centurion Knight, Adalia. I can't use Adalia. I think I can't use Adalia. Oh, it's they ended it. Okay. Yeah, I would have gotten a lot of points from uh, Erland with that double Istred as well. That was very nice. But one more for good measure against another pincer maneuver. That deck is uh, apparently very popular if it's the same deck, but... It, Usually is. This is a really cool starting hand. Um, I can get rid of both traveling priestesses and that's gonna be it. But Muta Generator is here. So we can just spam low provision cards. Yeah, and our opponent is doing the same. Yeah, I can just do whatever I want here. Because I can start with Reavers and maybe the Reaver Scout on the same row even. Just because I can boost my Reavers with it then. And we get Temple of Melitele. Okay. That was a really quick choice, the first one. Wow, they chose three cards already. That was really quick. Holy shit. Um, so this is just going to boost the Reaver. Now they draw a card. And boost it by, what is it, eight at the moment? So their Temple only got them eight points. And three extra gold cards in their deck. Which can also make a lot of difference, but they're gold cards that weren't in their original deck, so probably not something that they were counting on. They could just nuke the Reaver here, but then I just uh, start spamming low provision bronzes into Rune Mage. This is not the same deck, clearly. Oh, that could be a lock. Oh, fuck off. Oh, that's so lucky. I could just do the Redanian Knight. And just start deck boosting. It's fine. I'm gonna start using the uh, the muta generator value here. They actually didn't kill it, so they don't get the extra value. Um, I'm gonna get rid of that rune mage and do get the extra value. Then I can do siege support um, and maybe even istred first. I can use Istred later um, to boost him up to 5, which means that next turn he'll actually trigger his Grace. There we go, so that's 8 points. And I can get an extra um, Redanian Knight here as well with the Reaver Scout, so I can make this rather difficult for them. Banish a card. What was in my graveyard? Oh, that one Reaver. That one Reaver was in my graveyard. Funny. Um, so now we can do Reaver Scout. It's going to boost the one Reaver Hunter in my deck. No, it's not. Did it actually boost anything? 
Oh yeah, the Sentry and Royal Guards are also 5 provision. So I can do this, and then I can replay the... I could also go for this guy, but I think Redanian Knight is more interesting. There we go. And that's going to give me just enough points to go over him. Or them, in this case. And then Shoop. Shoop Resilience. So I get a point every turn. I'm 10 points behind, but I don't want to push here. Because if I still lose that, they, they, they have advantage here anyway. It's fine. I can handle it. Just need to get over 10 points if they pass. If they don't pass, it's not even a relevant discussion. And they need to make that decision up front. So it's fine. Um, we do get... Wow. We just get... Wow. I don't need Pavetta here. Um, we get another Redanian Knight. We'd love the Reaver, but we do still have Garrus as well. So what do I grab with Onedomancy here? I have a Traveling Priestess. Oh, yeah, we also have Inagon. Still in the deck. But we're pretty well stopped here. Um, they do get another Resilience card. But they did play a card to do that. Uh, Istred first. I don't know why I put him on the melee row there. That's my Reaver row. Please don't nuke my Istred. On the Aeromancy again, so this feels like they're pushing. Ooh. Vince Anses. Okay, I'm almost forced now to use Reavers. Could do Erland. It's a bit too early for Erland. I'm just gonna do Reavers on um, Garrison here and spawn an extra one. That's going to give me the, the edge I need to just get out of this. Um, I'm not in a really comfortable position at the moment. And I could still play... 4 3 2, 1. That's not going to kill, is it? No, it's not. Okay, uh, I'm going to put Idagon down. I'm gonna go, just going to go full spam here. There we go. Five Reavers. Go. Okay. Do I have enough? So I'm going to hit 14 points. So I have enough. I definitely have enough. I might even... The resilience is not going to matter. Um, so I'm going to risk it and put Sentry and Royal Guard here. I do need a bronze card afterwards, but it's not a problem. So I'm just going to put Sentry and Royal Guard here. And let the spam make sure I have enough points here. So only three points on the carryover for them. And I still have the carryover from Garrison, so this should be okay. And I can Erlen double if I want to. If I can get Pavetta as well, that would be really nice. This is the second time I've gotten that Traveling Priestess. Um, okay, we got the Weavers. Wow. Wow, just wow. I don't get Pavetta, so I, the double Erlen is gonna happen. It's just not gonna be as funny as it can be. So I have six cards, so I have... Two cards I can play before I need to play... Well, one card I need to play before I play Erland. Yeah, needs to be my second card. So, Adalia with a Reaver. That's that. I'm going to do double Erland now, if I can. I'm just going to risk it. Okay, here we go. So, what you do is you play Erland. Wherever you want to play him. It's going to boost everything in the deck. We get double leaders here as well, so that's going to almost kill Vandergrift. And now we hope that they don't kill Erland. If they don't kill Erland... Oh, they don't kill Erland. Okay. Um, that's good. That's that's really good. They don't kill Erland. Am I missing something here? No, I'm not. Uh, so... I'm going to play Temple of Melitele. I'm going to get rid of Erland. And then I'm going to kill the Vandergrift. So now we definitely have two ticks on the Seltkirk. Seltkirk can try and kill something, but he won't be able to do all that much, I think. He can do the Squire then. Um, and I need to tap Temple of Melitele in the... Not the next turn, but the turn afterwards, because otherwise I won't be able to tap Erland again. We get Radea. Cursed Scroll, so can they, they can draw a card if they want to. Are they going to use the Seltkirk? Yeah, they're too afraid. Or they're not even doing anything with him. I think Squire is not even worth it now because of the Seltkirk threat. So I'm gonna put Bohold here and then replay 
well, just to get another Reaver on the board. I could start protecting them, but I have like three more incoming. He's gonna have to kill Bohold here. Oh, we get more defensive maneuvers. No South Kirk, Kirk tap just yet. We need to kill Bohold here. Because otherwise he's, yeah, he'll spiral out of control. There we go. So now, as I said, we need to play... Um, uh, Erland now. So he's double boosted the deck. Uh, I could protect here. I don't think it's necessary just yet. We generate five points. We're going to be generating six. We're going to get six extra from... Ooh, and there's Erland as well. And then we get another pincer maneuver. Pincer maneuver is very popular, apparently, today. Uh, we get another Reaver Hunter. We get this. We get this. And we get a 38-point Erland. That is... Absolutely swimmingly. That should be enough. Against a 30 point Erland, actually. That's 17 points away. 17 points in a single card. It is possible. It's only 16, by the way. Yeah, it's fine. We got this. Boom. Double Erland. So you can do that. You can make that even bigger if you play Pavetta first. But yeah. There we go, I think that showed off how powerful this deck can be very nicely. We got a couple of um, pencil maneuver matches uh, matchups, which was really fun to play as well, because they have a similar uh, way of working, but I think our deck just has the, the better flexibility. We never went with the Royal Guards with this uh, with these example matches, but if you're facing Nilfgaard specifically, the Royal Guards are a lot more powerful, because you don't really care about locks as much, uh, while with the Reavers it's really a lot harder. Um, and if your opponent starts playing with the Reavers as well, you're just facing a, a terrible matchup, especially against the Simulate. They can just generate way more Reavers than you can ever do. Um, and the Royal Guards are just a way more passive way of generating points, and they also snowball them a lot better. Um, so if you start, that's also an option, you can start with the Royal Guards, bait them into copying a few of those, and then go into Reavers to just start destroying those Royal Guards. Uh, it's kind of depending on the matchup there and where the match is going. But uh, right now we didn't need to. The Reavers were definitely enough in every matchup that we got. Um, and as you saw, the double Erland combo, I was really happy that I could show this off in these example matches. But the double Erland combo can be really, really powerful, even without Pinsu Maneuver. You could see that comparison uh, with our opponent who had a lot of shuffling cap capabilities. So they had like six pincer maneuvers, a couple of uh, shuffles that they did on top of all of that. And their Erland was 30 points. We just played Erland twice uh, and that gave us a 38 point Erland with the Temple. Um, and of course a little mutagenerated generated prepare preparation there as well. Um, it's a really fun deck. It doesn't look too powerful, but it does give you the flexibility of high damage or a lot of points on your side of the board or a bit of both. And that's it for today's video. Hope you enjoyed the Temple Reavers and you will be enjoying the Temple Reavers as well. Because again, you can find this deck in the link in the description to the Blade Grant website. Import it into your own game. Don't forget to upvote it on the website as well. Because every support is really appreciated. And also just like this video. If you have any feedback on this video, on the deck things to improve this deck with as well just leave them in the comment section down below because i really like sparring with you guys on uh, every idea that i come up with to see if uh, i've missed something because uh, uh, definitely uh, that's definitely definitely an option as well so thank you enormously for watching and i hope to see you in the next video um, of Gwentage. the next episode of Gwentage is what i wanted to say so thank you goodbye and stay nutty